Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Gross with Condi Systems, and I'd like to welcome you to this webinar with my good friend Jimmy Lamb with Sawgrass. And uh, we hope that your few minutes that you'll spend with us will benefit you and help you grow your business and, and uh, grow your profits. Um, we're going to talk about a few things that I think will be interesting to you. As always, um, please let me know what questions you have, and I'm sure Jimmy will help with some of the, the uh, housekeeping issues. Jimmy, um, tell us a little bit about the housekeeping issues before we get started. Well, thank you, David. First of all, thanks uh, for inviting me out. Uh, I really look forward to this session. Uh, you're one of the guys here in the industry that just has so much knowledge, and to be able to actually you know, share a session with you, I mean, that's pretty awesome. It, it really is. So I really appreciate being out uh, today to uh, do this seminar with you. Okay, there's housekeeping. I know you do, you do, a lot of, do a lot of webinars and have a lot of great advice to share with people, and so thank you for being here. Well, my pleasure. So those housekeeping issues, uh, first of all, the audio is one way, which means you guys can hear us, but we can't hear you. And the way that you would communicate with us is to be able to text us. And, and the way that you do that is in the top right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see a red rectangle with a white arrow. And by clicking on that, it opens up a control panel where you can text in the message, which comes directly to me. It does not show up on the screen anywhere. It comes directly to me. Um, at that point, I, I can respond back to you uh, with an answer to your question. Now, I would ask that you wait until the end to ask the questions. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, we do have a lot of information to cover. And as we go through this, both David and I like to focus on what that particular uh, information is that we're trying to share with you as we go. Number two, I turn my control panel off to get it out of the way because mine's really big. And if my control panel is off, I don't see your questions. And I don't want you to feel like you're being ignored. But if you wouldn't mind just waiting till the end, we'll, we'll answer everything that we possibly can for you. And you can always follow up with either one of us uh, when the session is over. So with that said, David, I think we'll get started. And I'll go ahead and put the first slide up here on the screen. Yeah, I was going to say one thing as we get started here. Um, Everybody knows, of course, this is near and dear to my heart, and um, and just live it, breathe it, literally. But as we go through these slides, I'd like everybody to to focus on two things as they see the information, and 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 those two things are 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 related to growing your business and being profitable. And those two things are look at this information and decide how you can use this information to grow your profits with your existing clients. Grow your profits with your existing clients. And then number two is, how can you use this information to find new profitable clients? Find new profitable clients. And that really means that everyone needs to, to get out of their comfort zone. And so with that, that sort of uh, setting, Jimmy, let's do it. Okay, excellent. So in the wonderful world of digital decoration, it's important to take advantage of those kind of resources like David's referencing. And a couple of things I want you to be very aware of as we go through is that um, if you're new to digital decoration, it's important that you find the right resources to help you grow. And a good place for you to start is on the Condi website. If you haven't been there uh, and go visit that site, it is just full of all kinds of useful information that can help your business. For example, Condi Tech Tips with David Gross. Um, David has, you know what, you can't even begin to see all the tips he has here on the screen. I just have a, a shot there of that website. But you can go right there and get a list of very important things to help you with your business. David, anything you want to comment on about that? Because that is your area. The, um, what I would recommend, and I'll, at the end of the webinar, um, I'll give people a link on our website, but a, a very useful resource is the complete collection of 101 tips and tricks for sublimation success. And um, I'll give you that link. If for whatever reason you have to leave early, just touch base with your, your rep here or send me an email at dgross at condi.com, D-G-R-O-S-S, condi.com, and I'll make sure you get a copy. But I think it's a good resource that has um, some of the things we're going to cover here, Jimmy, but uh, I know we're going to cover some new exciting things as well. Right. You know, the other thing that's very impressive on, on your website that really sets you apart from so many other websites out there, David, is all your different videos. And again, everyone should be aware of this because 
if you're starting out and you don't know how to do something, like uh, maybe you need to do a coffee mug, well, how do you do it? You know what? If you go to Condi TV, they got all the channels there, and they can show you exactly how to do it. On top of that, David mentioned the 125 ways to make money. I just happen to have a little slide here, but that's a wonderful book uh, David was sharing with me the other day. Uh, it's just so full of information. It's something that you definitely, starting that business or trying to grow that existing business, wonderful resource to, to take you to that next level. You know, it's great, and one of the things is um, when, when that book was being written, um, it was written by Steve Spence, and first question I asked Steve, I said, let me see if this really has many great ways to make money, and I've seen a number of our clients located in Alabama, possibly other states, that would go to tractor pulls and set up a little display, a little booth, and sell custom merchandise, and sure enough, it's in the book. <laughs> Good old tractor pull. Okay, so our focus, let's talk about making money with digital decoration. Well, you know, digital decoration is everywhere. I mean, really it is. And when you get into business, you start to really notice a lot more than you ever did before. The average person has things all over their house that someone has done, okay, with sublimation, for example. And yet they don't even know what it is. They just know they like it, okay. And that's important because if they like it, they buy more of it gives you more opportunity to make money. I mean, in fact, digitally decorated products are really an everyday part of life when it gets down to it. You know, the old joke is in this industry that sublimation is about coffee mugs and mouse pads, but it's so much more than that. Okay, I mean, the possibilities are huge. And it's just a few little photographs here on the screen just to get you thinking about all the different directions. And we're going to try and cover a whole lot of those different directions as we go through with you this afternoon of where you can go with digital decoration, okay, specifically sublimation. Now the keys right, to making Jimmy, money, and go ahead David. I was going to add Jimmy that um, the reason sublimation is, is going viral today is because people need to do something with all their digital images and if you look at all these images they're, they're just, they're, they're really great ways for people to um, use their, their cameras, use their digital cameras. Oh yeah, because everybody has a camera. I mean, and they're better and better every day. I mean, you think about it, the, the quality that we're even starting to see on cell phones now is just crazy, you know. So, I mean, everyone's taking pictures. Very good point. So the keys to making money with sublimation, number one, to know what you're selling. And we're going to look a little deeper on that. Number two, to offer unique products. Number three, deliver awesome graphics. And number four, focus on niche markets, okay. These things right here can help you take that business to where you want to be to make that kind of money that you want. So we're going to start off and talk a little bit about know what you're selling because I find so many times that people don't really understand what they're selling. And the key here all revolves around perception. You know, you've heard the term perception is reality, but that's the honest truth. You know, if, if someone tells you your house is worth a million dollars, let's say the tax collector tells you it's worth a million the real estate agent tells you it's worth a million, and the appraiser says it's worth a million, and you put it on the market for a million dollars, and five years later, you haven't sold it, guess what? It's probably not worth a million dollars, because no one believes it's worth a million dollars, thus they're not paying for it, okay? That's that perception is reality. If someone perceives the value low, they're only going to pay a low amount of money for it. So a big focus for you guys out there is to be able to create a perception of everything you're doing at the highest level so you can get the highest possible margin. Just because you knew it cost three dollars to make it doesn't mean that you charge six dollars for it. Okay? You want to drive that perception up as high as you possibly can to get that type of margin. Okay? And and I know people tell me all the time, well you just can't make money doing this and, and I'm looking at what they're doing and and they're not presenting a perception of value in the products that they're selling. Now, a lot of this starts out with saying that question, what are you selling, okay? And, and I know if you're doing sublimation, it's easy to say, hi, I'm Jimmy, and I'm selling sublimation, okay? Well, who cares? Because the average person buying from you doesn't know what sublimation is, and they're not really concerned about what it is. They're more concerned about the benefit that they're going to get from whatever it is you're selling to them. And that's the kind of thing that you need to focus on every day when you're out there selling to people. And that is 
you know, raising that perception. So you really got to know what you're selling because at the end of the day, you're not selling sublimation. Okay. So we're going to go through some test questions here, as I like to say. We're going to do some test questions so you can better understand what it is I'm talking about. So if you look on the screen here and you see what I have on the screen, I ask you, what is this? You, you might answer, those are mouse pads. And I would tell you that technically you are correct. And some of you say, you know, those are sublimated mouse pads. I'd say, again, technically you are correct. But if you just go in to sell sublimated mouse pads, it's kind of boring. Okay, it really is because uh, the customer is kind of like, okay, so, you know, how does this benefit me? What you need to understand is what you're selling here is you're selling advertising. And, and the way you present it to the customer has to show the customer what the benefit is of buying that product from you. It's not about a sublimated mouse pad. It's about that value. David? Yeah, and, and what I've termed the, the value really comes down to three things in sublimation. And that is the substrate has some, some generic value. The all-important artwork has, has value, tremendous amount of value. And also the selling environment. Are you selling at the flea market? Are you selling at a, a, a posh retail presence? And so those three all tie together to, to give you that value equation. Right. And, and this is important because I look at the, the customer through the customer's eyes, okay? Why would the customer buy this from me? I mean, what is a compelling reason for them to buy this from me? And then I want to present it to them in such a way as for them to say, oh, yeah, you know, I can see the benefit in that. Now, one of the ways I've done that, and this, this is a great example here, uh, is, is to see this T-shirt. When you look at this T-shirt, you see the Hard Rock Cafe on there, okay, uh, in, in Orlando. And this is one of the greatest examples of, of creative marketing. Because if you think about Hard Rock Cafe, this is a company that doesn't do any TV advertising, no radio advertising, no newspaper advertising, and virtually no printed media of any kind other than a few ads and travel magazines for Hard Rock Hotel. But yet everyone knows who they are. How is it that everyone knows who Hard Rock is? It's because they sell products that's been branded with their name and people wear them everywhere. Okay, you know, a lot of people describe Hard Rock as is a um, restaurant that sells T-shirts. I describe them as a T-shirt shop that sells food. Okay, because that's their business model is really selling uh, the branded items and not just apparel, but all the hard items too. Now, when I've gone out with my past businesses selling to people, I've used this same approach for the right situation. It doesn't work for every situation, but um, I've done a lot in the souvenir industry, and I've done a lot with companies that aren't necessarily selling souvenirs, but they're, they're reselling products with their image or their name on there. And I like to walk in and say, what would you say if I could show you a way to have your customer pay you to advertise for you? It gets their attention every time. Okay, and then I launch into you know about making products for them that are actually can be sold. Now that doesn't work for every business, okay, but for certain business models it does work, and it's using the same thing that you see right here, you know that advertising concept. David, do you have anything you'd like to add on that? Yeah, I think people there. I think your point is 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 good, Jimmy. For instance, if people think of the name badge. They say, well, that's a name badge, but if you think about taking, say, the lower portion of a two, two by three name badge and dedicating it, dedicating it to a little bit of advertising, like ask me about the new interest rates, um, ask me about our new special, new products, whatever, you can take many things and turn it into a, a advertising uh, billboard, and that's so valuable for businesses out there to, to be able to take something like a name badge, for instance, and, and make it a whole lot more valuable, the benefit to the digital decorator is that that name badge is going to become dated and needed, need to be turned over more often. So it's just it's a tremendous amount of, of resources out there to, to look at every product and, and to think about how to innovate, but, but most important, think about how you can add value for your clients. And that's such a great point that you make because you're taking a name badge, which you and I know is a fairly low-cost item, and putting it to a higher level, which is what we're trying to do. You know, it's it's you know how we present it determines the value probably more than anything else. So 
Next question, what is this? That looks like a coffee mug. It says, I love New York. Probably sublimated, obviously. Okay, So how would you define this? Well, it is advertising for New York, but this is a great example of a souvenir. And, and in the world of souvenirs, and this is one of my specialties, you know, it's all about people buying things to be able to say, been there, done that. And when people go on vacation, and this is so true, you think about your vacations, okay? People go on vacation, they tend to leave their brain at home and replace it with their gold card from, you know, the credit card company. In other words, they're living for a week, maybe, a, a fantasy life, and I use that term lightly, okay? But you're on vacation. You want to enjoy yourself. You don't want to worry about bills and, and all that. And most people overspend on a vacation, you know, fact of the matter. And they buy souvenirs to take home to remind them of that wonderful opportunity. And they spend a lot of money on those souvenirs. And if you look at the souvenir marketplace, the key to being in the souvenir marketplace is everything that we're saying. You know, the unique products uh, and the graphics. But the most important thing, to be honest, the most important thing is the been there, done that. You see here it says Lighthouses of Ohio. This is New York. This is Yellowstone. This is Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville in Key West. People demand that they have the name drop on there. And so when I did the souvenir industry, we looked to create designs that we could use in multiple locations and just change a name drop. And, you know, and Jimmy Buffett does that really well with Margaritaville. They can use that same design for Key West and Orlando and Las Vegas and whatnot. They just change a name drop. So you know, what you're doing is essentially creating templates where you're just dropping in for the different locations and then you're putting those products out there. Um, and, and there's a lot of money in that industry. You know, the key is really probably as much as anything, really good graphics because this is just a coffee mug. You know, this is a souvenir. And you got to remember that. Okay, forget that it's on a coffee mug; it's a souvenir, and people want to invest in that to take home with them. David, what I was going to say, Jimmy, was that um, the digital decorator needs to keep in mind they have some distinct advantages over the, the competitors out there because your minimum quantity is one. You can produce uh, whatever the client needs with no excess, and they can reorder uh, when they need to. Number two is you can go into, for instance, in Mobile here, we have the Explorium, which is a kid science place. And you could go in there to that gift shop, and I think you could probably do it today. And you could say, I can provide you a, a customized product. It could be a mug. It could be eyeglass case, whatever. And I can theme it for the museum. okay? But I can also theme it for whatever the attraction is that's now on display. And, and so that makes it even more personal to the people that are coming in to visit and see the exhibit. They see something they can take back that reminds them of the Explorium. In addition, they can have something that, that tells them they were there for the dinosaur exhibit. So the digital decorator um, has, has many advantages that will run rings around traditional long-run technology. Yeah, and that, that, that is such a great point, again, because... You know, what I found with a lot of the souvenir places is they were forced to buy big quantities. And if they buy a big quantity, you know, a lot of times they first of all didn't know if it was going to sell or not. Okay. So they're buying it at risk. If they had to buy a thousand units, they only, you know, can cross their fingers and hope that they actually sell all thousand units. And they don't really know until they put it on the shelf if it's going to sell well or not. And then the second aspect of that is they have to carry that inventory. They have to store it somewhere and, and all that has overhead for them. And that was one of the angles we would actually use. We would go in and offer them very small quantities where they could actually try it out. And then once that they saw that it worked, they could get a little bit larger quantity if they wanted, you know, at, at you know, the little discounted price because they're getting a little higher quantity. But that was a foot in the door for us. You know, I can do you very small quantities. You can go see how well they sell. And then, you know, if you want a little better price, you can buy larger quantities the next time around. So it takes the risk out for them. And it's actually very appealing if you can talk to the right person who's, who's doing the buying. You know, that can open a door for you. And that means bring a sample with you. When you make yes. a sales call on this, you need to carry a sample with you and, and make it personalized for them. Go right. get their logo graphics off their website. Yep, and I just threw this T-shirt back up again simply to, you know, we looked at Hard Rock a minute ago as advertising, but, you know, the reality here, it's a souvenir. And that's why people buy this product. They don't buy it because they want to advertise for Hard Rock. They buy it because it says Orlando or Paris, or I have ones that say Barcelona, um, you know, there. So then when they wear it, people know where they went, you know. And that, that's why they are so successful with it. And, 
you know, that's just a whole other angle of marketing that's worked very well for that company and, and others like them. Okay, our next test question, what is this? Well, the top item happens to be a stadium seat cushion. The bottom is a license plate, and you may be already on the right track of where we're going with this. These are great examples of uh, spirit products or fundraisers. And, you know, if you're dealing with schools, fundraising is key. Schools don't have any money. They need a way to make money. And to be able to put together a fundraising program where they could sell spirit products and then make money back, you know, that's a good way to go. And, and that means approaching the booster organizations, okay, athletic boosters, band boosters. I've been a band booster's president for three years, and, and I'm here to tell you that our top fundraiser is selling spirit products, and we saw a lot of it. Uh, PTA, I mean, there's so many organizations that if you approach them, and, and you're showing them the benefit, you don't approach them to say, look, you know what, I can sublimate some items and you can sell them. You approach them by saying, listen, are you guys tired of the same old, same old when it comes to fundraising? You know, are, you, are your you know, community sick and tired of buying, you know, pizza dough and cookie dough and magazine subscriptions and stuff nobody wants? You know, how about something that's new and exciting and different, and then you can introduce them to what you have here? David, I know you got a lot of good comments yeah, on the subject, I, too. I would say that um, I see fundraising really three levels of it. Number one is you just you come up with a great design that they love and, and they just buy it. And, and you keep delivering the product to them for the length of the fundraiser. You obviously share some profit with it. Number two is you take any of these products and you also make it where it can be personalized for the, the person that's donating the money to the uh, effort. And I think that's a great way because um, that gets people a lot more excited because they are buying a, a personalized product. Number Three way is to have a fully custom product, and a good fundraising example of that is the Christmas ornaments. Um, Christmas ornaments are just awesomely hot, obviously during Christmas, uh, but but they also sell you know year round. I think a lot of people are always looking for opportunities, so the school or whatever the organization can offer a um, you know a little little card or something that says um, you know send us your photograph, we'll put it on a a Unisub or a porcelain Christmas ornament, and and we'll get it delivered back to you. So I think there's a lot of opportunities in fundraisers because, as Jimmy said, um, there's there's some very dull, boring <laughs> fundraisers out there, and often when you get right down to the fundraisers that are out there, they really aren't making much money off no. of those fundraisers. And so sublimation does provide a breadth of fair share, and I think does offer additional money. Yeah, and you know, as I said, I've seen this from both sides of the fence because now I'm in the position of being a band booster president, actually retired band booster president, but uh, still active. Um, after three years, it was time to retire. But the point being is we go to the football games, the band uh, does, and we have a tent there, and we actually are selling these type of uh, spirit products, a whole wide variety. You know, I mean, we're, we're carrying T-shirts all the way down to the keychains because you got to accommodate everybody. You got kids who are just going to buy a keychain. You got adults who want, you know, uh, to buy a, a nice poly performance sweatshirt or T-shirt or something. Um, but but the point being is, we're offering the stock items, and then we're doing just as David was saying. We're actually saying, you know, by the way, we can make you gifts. You know, because uh, we actually run a big. Um, sell at the school. A sale is probably the wrong word. We never give it away, trust me. Uh, but we run a big promotion at the school in November where we're, you know, promoting it to all the parents and the students to come in that we can take any of these products and customize them, just like David's talking about. I mean, a wide range of things we can customize, and that becomes a big spike for our sales. And let me tell you something. We, we brought in, you know, over $10,000 in one month um, through our efforts. That's, that's our retail or gross sales. Um, you know, just doing this to the school. So there's a lot of possibilities if you if you position it the right way. And trust me, somebody local, you know, is supplying the band and they're making a good bit of money there. And you know what? They help drive the boat because they're out there actually suggesting stuff to us all the time. You need to try this this year or try that. So they're always pumping us full of new ideas. And those people, they're you. And that's exactly what you need to be doing. So what's this? I love my T-shirts. And, you know, I'm in North Carolina, and the deer hunting's big in North Carolina, probably pretty big down there in your way too there, uh, David. But uh, these are the kind of things, you know, we go into clubs, and it's really easy to go into clubs and show them some pretty cool stuff and get them to start buying. 
you know, I say this is an example of making a statement because really somebody that's in a club, they want to make a statement. A deer hunter wants to make the statement. Okay. That, you know, a lot of times with the deer hunting in the clubs, again, they give you that photo of them holding that 20 point buck. Yeah. Keep on dreaming. Okay. But anyway, they're, they're, they're holding up the head of that buck that's, you know, more realistic in size. And they want to put that picture on everything. They're proud of them. It's a proud moment. You can put the date and the guy's name, and you can add some extra graphics to it. You can sell to the club. I mean, it becomes a fundraiser for the club. The club turns around and resells these things themselves, and it's a fundraiser um, for that. Now, now I'm a kind of guy, though, that I like to take it and, and use those graphics, just like David's been saying. Use those graphics. You know, This is okay, Willow Lake Hunting Club. But I think they're more likely to buy it if it's something like this. Okay, you put that on something, and these guys are like, "Oh, I want that," you know. And and so, taking your products and driving them to that higher level, you know, with that uniqueness in the graphics, I man, it makes all the difference in the world. David, really, not much to add. One one little just comment for everybody to to remember is that, for instance, on these shirts that are sublimatable, great products. Um, what I would tell you is that every product that you make for somebody, um, why don't you sublimate in the in the tail of the shirt, or the lower portion of sublimate your your reorder information, sublimate your contact information, so if somebody does buy that shirt, and and you know they're taking home, they love the graphics, they love the feel of the shirt, they they'll be able to see your information there because you can sublimate it to the bottom of it. And they can make a, they can call you and, and, and find out what you can do to help their situation, their business, their organization. So, so let every opportunity that you have be an opportunity of referrals, um, inviting people to contact you, and, and let them know what you can do. Wow, that, that is a good point. I've never really thought about doing that. In my uh, earliest days of apparel decoration, when I was, primarily doing embroidery and screen printing, we would actually put our own labels in like the headwear, but that's kind of a pain. I mean, you, you don't want to do that one at a time. You want the manufacturer to do it, and it's a little bit aggravating, but I mean, the build, ability to be able to just sublimate it right there on the tail, like you're saying, bam. I mean, that's easy, quick, and it leads people back to you. Um, wonderful idea. Great idea. Now, this has got to be one of my favorites of all time. I mean, you know, there, it, nothing beats a child, a newborn, asleep, okay? Um, but the reality is, you know, when that new child comes in, I mean, you know, everybody's taking a picture, you know, and everybody puts a picture in their album, and they look at it for a while, but unfortunately, a lot of times the albums kind of disappear. Here, what we're doing is we're just taking basically a hard plastic kind of product, but instead of just putting a picture of Hannah Elizabeth on here, you know, they've gone and actually, and it's hard to read the small print on your screen, but they got the birthday and, and they got, uh, you know, sometimes people put a Bible verse down there or, or they put a, a nursery rhyme or something and other graphics. This was not that hard to do. You know what I'm saying? It's not that hard to do. But this is a product that's worth so much money because when I ask you what is this, please don't say it's a picture of Hannah Elizabeth because this is actually a memory, okay? A memory product, not to be confused with drugs to help you remember things. But this is a memory product. You can also describe it as a keepsake or an heirloom. And all those are key marketing terms. When, when you position your product with these keywords, you're raising that level, okay? If you say that's a sublimated image, wow, okay? If you say it's a memory, then people are more willing to pay that $35, $40 price tag than, you know, if it's just another picture. And this is a huge area, and, and it ties into so many different possibilities of what you can do of capturing memories for people and reproducing them on products. David? What I was going to say was um, every time you, you do a product like this, or any product for that matter, what I strongly recommend is you take a picture of it. And, and that way you can, you can uh, if you have a retail presence, you can have a, a digital photo frame and what you're doing is you're showing people the products you've done and just giving them all sorts of great ideas. So every time you do something like this, take a picture of it so that you can either put it on your website, put it on a photo frame, but you want to let people know what you can do and give them ideas of things maybe they, they, they didn't know about, something they could recommend or a, a baby gift or whatever. So take a picture. Yeah, and, and always remember this because I know a lot of times – People look at it and say, oh, you know what, uh, I, I deal with the corporate crowd. I don't deal with this kind of stuff. But, A, never say that 
because everybody is a pathway to someone else or another market. And you know, for example, I was uh, I I helped start a chain of retail stores that did you know gifts and. I remember a lady coming in and buying, you know, some some gift products for the house. And what we didn't realize was she was the wife of like uh, one of the senior VPs for Coleman Products Company. You know, Coleman makes all kinds of outdoor products and sports products and whatever. And now she was really enthused with what we could do in the store and she came back and with her husband and they started saying, "Well, can you do, you know, this kind of stuff for us and these kind of products for and promotional products and Etc. And it was like, wow, this little gift item tied me into this Fortune 500 company. And then it kind of works in reverse. You know, a lot of these big companies that are buying promotional products, when they enter into like the Christmas season, the gift season, they actually start looking for more personalized, customized products uh, for their key clients and staff. So all these things interlink together. And the more that you know that you can do, and the more you do, just like with David, being able to show people all these wide range of, of things, you never know where it's going to lead. You need to be prepared to go into any market you can and do the products. Okay, my final item here in our little test questions of what is this has got to be one of my most favorite marketing items of all time. Because when you look at this and, and I say, what is this? You say, well, that must be the pet rock. Well, what this really is is proof that people will buy just about anything if it's packaged creatively. And the packaging I'm talking about, two different ways of packaging. Number one, the marketing and promotions. And that means that we, we package things uh, as far as how we present them, how do we talk about them, what are the key words, okay? That's your marketing, you know, the heirloom keepsake memory. That's packaging, okay, and presentation. The other is physical. And you look what happened here. Someone took a rock. Granted, they sanded it down and made it nice and pretty, but they took a rock and they convinced people to buy it as the ultimate pet. And then they actually packaged it, and you have the little house, and you had, you know, it seemed like you had clothing and all these different things for your rock. And somebody made millions and millions of dollars off taking a simple rock and transforming it in to something much more. And that's my whole objective on everything we're talking about here is transforming a sublimated substrate into the pet rock, if you know what I mean. David? Uh, nothing to add, Jimmy. I, I believe you. Yeah. Did you have a pet rock, by the way? Just wondering. I think we had the chia pets and things like that. Yeah, you know, I think I had the pet rock. It's long gone now. It's blended in in the backyard with the other rocks or something. But you know, but that was an amazing piece of marketing. You got to admit, it really was. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, what are you selling? Okay. Well, what we're really selling are products that use decoration and embellishment to deliver a message and/or enhance the value of the item being offered for sale. And make sure everything you do that you're talking in terms of elevating the value okay, for people and showing them. A lot of people don't know what their needs are. Help them find those needs. Help them see how your products and services can satisfy whatever needs it is that they have out there. Okay, That's what you're selling and that's what you want to focus on day in and day out. Now, our next item, remember we had four items there. Our second item here is offering unique products and that's called thinking outside the box. Also, I've talked to it about turning the ordinary into extraordinary. And we're going to look at some really creative products here. And, uh, and David is definitely a product guy, and, and he's got so many different things that, uh, that he is offering through Condi uh, that you can use to, to do that same thing with thinking outside the box, which, you know, starting out with flip-flops. I mean, wow, who would have thought of him in sublimated flip-flops? And yet, there they are. David, I mean, this is your type of thing, man. I mean, the flip yeah, we, that was we, great. We love it. What I tell everybody, going back a little bit to also to the previous slide, and this one is, when somebody tells you what they want, what you really need to do is is be more than an order taker. You need to be a consultant. You need to think about how you can add value to their designs um, with with everything that you're touching. And then, as you have repeat business from their client, don't take that business for granted. So let's say you're selling some flip flops to sorority things like that. Well, you, 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 you better put on that, that flip-flop, you better put some sort of event, something happening that, that's going to want those ladies to, um, you know, get, get next year's version or another version of it or something like that. So always think about how you can make it more than just 
um, you know, me too kind of product. Add value to it by looking at the event, dating it with the year, um, spring fling for you know 2011, whatever it is, add value. Now, obviously, the number of products we have is is just tremendous, and it's it's growing larger every day. And so, you should be able to provide your clients on a regular basis with new things to look at. And so, the way you do that is, is you got to get out of your comfort zone, and you you've got to got to really get out there and show people and, and and not take anything for granted. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that's it. I've done a lot of events, just like you said, and 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 year after year, people come out to the events to buy that year's souvenir, okay? Because it says 2010, now it's out of date. You know, it's 2011. So being able to do that event type of of products, just like you're saying, you, you make it outdated, so that they buy another one, and that's different from something wearing out. <laughs> you know, that's just oh, it's not in and new anymore. David, you know, I've noticed that you had some interesting glassware. And um, and I just like the creativity of, of where the different ways we can go with with some of the age old products, you know, taking them to a new level. Yeah, there's there's um, you know mugs or things that hold coffee, water, anything else. There's certainly a large variety. In fact, if you had asked me say 15 years ago, could I envision what the state of mugs would be in the sublimation world? I would have never guessed um, the the variety. Um, and all the exciting things that keep going. We're looking at some of the, I guess, innovations that would are, are extreme right now of what you can do now with sublimation. Um, the uh, one of the, the the great people in the that really started the mug business for those out there that want to know a little history was a guy named Mick Imager, and Mick recently passed away. I think about two weeks ago. And he really was was probably uh, the person best known for starting the the sublimation mug revolution here in the United States. And um, and let me tell you, it's it's going strong. Yep. And, and one of the new things you have out that's pretty impressive is your subless slate. Now, I'd say that five times in a row. Slow subless slate. But anyway, subless slate. You got to say a little bit slow to get it out. But uh, man, who would have thought you could actually sublimate on a rock per se? It's a metamorphic rock, Jimmy, and um, really does well with you know outdoor images, vacation images. Um, I've seen people now use it for corporate images, you know, um, solid as a rock kind of stuff. Right. It's it's, it's darn tough stuff. Um, it sublimates well. Um, you, you just really never know what what the future will bring. But you know, for people that are looking for an alternative to some traditional plaques. Things like that. Um, this is a breath of fresh air. You know, we were talking the other day on the phone about the new steel products, and this is just an example of steel. But would you like to elaborate a little bit about steel? I know that's really taking off lately. The um, you know a lot of a lot of both schools organizations really need um, what I would call dry erase boards with magnetic capability, and 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 the steel is coming on strong. In, in different sizes, different forms. So we've got a fair number of products now. Expect more. Um, many people do not realize that almost all sublimation substrates are dry erased because of the nature of the coating. And the folks at Unisub um, do do a great job. In fact, Jimmy, um, I, I'm asking Unisub to help some of the schools here in Mobile replace some of their dry erase boards because Unisub also makes non-sublimation dry erase boards that are oh, 4 cool. by 8 feet. And um, it's um, just a different coating technology. Right. Um, so the folks at Unisub have, have done probably more for our industry than, than uh, anybody else uh, with the exception of Sawgrass. Well, I think Condi's done a whole lot for the industry. You'll know the truth. So uh, you guys just have a fascinating collection of different items that people can do. You know, like the tile. You know, it, whether you're doing a tile mural or you're just doing individual tiles, you know. There's so many different things you can do with this, and I love the murals. I mean, I've run into people that do nothing but murals, you know, and and, and it, it's not cheap, you know. They charge a pretty penny for it, and they get that. I think there's a good the um, murals now for folks that haven't done a mural. I recommend that as best you can, you you, you donate a tile mural um, to something. It could be a restaurant. It could be a um, a public entity. 
the, um, the library, get it installed, use that as your calling card. Now we've got murals that are ceiling tile murals. We've got uh, glass floor tile murals, ceramic murals. Um, so you have a wide variety of, of cases. I mean, imagine going to the dentist office and you look straight up and you see <laughs> uh, a pleasant scene on the ceiling right. tile. Yeah, so with, with your logo finds on it. Its, sublimation finds its way into to many, many parts of our life. And so great opportunities. And the trick is just think about your contacts, um, think about who you're running into on a daily basis, and figure out how you can help them with, with um, making their business more competitive, making their business unique, because uh, by helping them, um, it's going to help you. Oh, it's a great point. You know, I love that concept. Put, put a mural up. Put your autograph or name or something down there in the bottom corner, just like you can see actually on this one on the screen. And you're right. You get a high traffic area where people come in and say, wow, look at that. And, you know, it, it also becomes your calling card for the most part, you know, when they see that. And I like what you say about the dentist because they do all kinds of things on the ceiling now um, that where before you just stared at the stupid ceiling. And now you actually get entertained by the ceiling. You know, this, I, I come across, again, I like to share things that I come across that, that people don't always think about. And, and granted, you need probably a little bit larger printer on here, but this is just a throw pillow. And all they did was they sublimated, you know, the images of, of these wonderful animals here, uh, these wonderful pets, onto fabric that, that was then sewn into, you know, a throw pillow. And I know there's a lot of people that either can do some type of sewing or know someone that can, or maybe you're working with, you know, a custom upholstery person or something, but you know, there's so many things that we can do with material. We can take fabric and we can sublimate it and then we can shape it into something else. It's like you can actually take the steel stock and sublimate it and shape it into other things. David? Well, I didn't, can't really think of anything to oh. comment on. Okay. That when, when it comes to a lot of these traditional products that seem to have an embroidery flavor, um, um, you know, the, the new throws that are the quilt kind of throws, very yep. exciting product. Um, so, you know, it, 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 it just lends itself to an add-on product for, for quilters and, and embroidery stores. And that's what I tell everybody is if you already are doing something, you know, figure out how to add add on to that that effort to figure out, you know, okay, this client's coming in, you know, what else might they be interested in? And I think many, for instance, award shops, they lack the ability, for the most part, to think outside the box. So they've got a yep. team mom coming in, for instance. Well, do you think that team mom might look like a throw pillow with the team on there? Well, of course. But would you ever expect to find a throw pillow in an award shop? No. Should they? Of course they should, because that team mom has more power than anyone. <laughs> yeah, that's that. true. Yeah, you're right about that. Oh, okay. Uh, acrylics, you know, that's something that the new and different. And, and you, right on, you were talking about awards, and so many of the awards people are migrating into sublimation because, you know, you take your traditional engraved award, that's one thing, but then when you look at something here where we actually have the photographic image of the, the player and we put the logo, I mean, look at all these wonderful things that we can do, you know, with sublimation that you can't do, but you can't do that with embroidery. You, you can't do that with engraving. You, you can't do that with screen printing, okay? I mean, wow, look at what we can do that some of the other ones can't do. You know, Straps on the back of sunglasses, you know, another great, you know, advertising type of product. The, the other thing, too, that, that really focus on using these products is you can turn ordinary into extraordinary without a lot of effort. But yet that amount of effort that you put into it equates to higher profits and more business. For example, we have, you know, the football player on a photo panel here on the left. But, wow, look on the right. On the right, we took something that, you know, a panel is actually the football itself the same image, but now we've added in some uh, extra graphics. We took it to a higher level. I mean, I think that the families, especially the dads, are more likely to buy one on the number right than the one on the left, and they're going to pay more for the one on the right because you took something ordinary and made it extraordinary with sublimation. You're right, Jimmy. In fact, um, one of the analogies I used in talking about ordinary versus extraordinary is that you, know, you think of black and white versus color TV. 
and there are many places that would, if you walk in and order a, a plaque for the kids for football or whatever, they're going to sell you an engraved plaque. And um, and that's the, the black and white. And, and, and when we talk to those people, they say, well, this is what we've been doing all these years. And, and uh, the only reason they would ever change to, to providing full color sublimated kind of products is if someone in their area starts offering them. And then suddenly, guess what? Everybody wants color TV. Yep. You know, here we have we have the guy on the left, and he's he's on the baseball mound. And you know, maybe mom or dad took that picture. Maybe they have a nice camera. They, uh, you know, they bought and they got a zoom lens, and and it took a really good image. And a lot of times, those images just end up, like I say, in a photo album. They may end up on Facebook, obviously, uh, some of these places. And you know what? It doesn't make a bad image just to sublimate. I mean, just for a pure basic sublimation onto a photo panel. You know, the amount of resolution and clarity you get is just so awesome. But when you look over what's on the right, and we have Christina, who is obviously big into volleyball. You know, we took a picture of Christina now, and we enhanced it with more graphics, and we made it that much more exciting. And this is the kind of thing that Christina's going to want, her parents are going to want, grandparents are probably going to want. You know, this is something totally different. You know, Christina's mom takes the picture of Christina, but she can't do, bring it to life like we can do with what our process, okay? You know, they take the picture, great, they put it on a shelf for a little while, they carry it around their wallet, all right? But here, you got a showpiece. I guess that's probably the best way to describe it, that showpiece, you know, taking it to that next level. Jimmy, one of the things I recommend is that if your kids are involved with sports or whatever, or if you want to sell into that market, which is a great market to sell in for some sports. Other sports, you know, the parents are not going to spend so much money. But the first thing you do is you find out when picture day is, and you go up and introduce yourself to the photographer. Oh, yeah. And, and you ask for permission to use their images. Obviously, right. his images are copyright. And if you will go to the trouble of doing that, first of all, you'll gain credibility. Yep. Number two is there's a possibility that you could develop an outstanding partnership with that person because a good portion of the photographers are not interested in selling sublimated products. Um, but they are interested in having a competitive advantage over somebody else who's bidding for that same that job next year. And so if that photographer sees you as, as value to, to the kids and to the parents, uh, you just never know what kind of relationship you can strike. And, and so just just remember to do that, and I think it will, will pay off. Yeah, you know, look at the sidelines in a football game at the high school. You'll see guys with cameras, but they don't work for the newspaper. And they're a professional photographer doing those action sports photos. And that's the same kind of thing. They're going to, you know, try to sell the photos to, you know, the parents or whatnot. But you bring, you know, start that relationship where you help them take that photo and put it into a variety of products. I mean, all most of them can sell is a print, whereas you can take it and apply it to a hundred different items and give people a hundred different more options of how to spend their money. Okay, so you can really take that one image and turn it into a huge collection of uh, resellable items. You know, just what David was saying about the black and white, there you go. That's the traditional engraved plaque, okay? And it's nice, okay, a nice plaque on the wall, whatever. But the reality is it doesn't really, it's not personal. It's just kind of plaque and white, for lack of a better term. That's just an excellent way to describe it. Whereas you look over here, and we've done one for Eddie Lewis, who's the most valuable player, but what do you see? You see Eddie in the image sliding in the home plate. To me, that is just awesome because that speaks volumes above cross baseball bats engraved on a plaque. I mean, wow, you know. So there we go, black and white, color. Which one do you prefer? And then we also talk about packaging from the term of um, packaging things together. Bundling is probably the word we want to use here. And, and I think David has said this a dozen times a day, talking about understanding all the different needs that people might have. You don't want to just sell them the mug or just sell them the plaque. If you get in the foot in the door, you start showing them all these different types of things that you can sell them, okay? Because one thing can lead to another. And, you know, the possibilities are huge of how we can bundle together different products. What I tell everybody is that you should, you should keep their artwork on hand 
let them know that in the future, if they see a product that like uh, the photograph on it or whatever, that you still have that artwork and you're e you're able to reprint it for them. And so it really gives them a reason to continue to stop by and see what's going on and see what you have new. You know, here again, we took the photo. You know, everybody likes the photos of the kids, okay? But a lot of times it sits on the shelf a while and disappears. And this is where we turned it into, as you saw in the image earlier, we, we took the, the baby and brought the baby to a whole new level. Or as a child gets older, you know, again, we can take their vacation pictures and take it to a whole nother level by the way that we, we package it together. We turn that ordinary picture into an extraordinary moment in time. You know, and that's what we're trying to do because that drives the value up. That gets people excited. Everybody's excited about kids' pictures, but take it to that next level wherever you can. Now, Amen. just just as important about the unique products is the awesome graphics. I think we've touched on graphics a lot, but one of the things, and David pointed this out to me the other day when we were talking about it, and he's so right, and, and, and we're going to cover that here, is you don't have to be a graphic artist to have great graphics because there's enough options out there that we can get things off the online, we can purchase things online and turn them into, you know, some really interesting things. And really the better graphics can make higher profits. For example, somebody wants a you know, a plaque and they, they want the baseball image, and they want the name of the team and the year or something. That's boring. We can do it, but it's boring. But what about something like that? You know? And you know what? That's stock graphics there. <laughs> you know, I know it looks great and customized. That's pretty much stock graphics there. Which would you? Which is more exciting, the one on the left or the one on the right? Excitement sells more stuff, and also lends itself to higher markups. Yeah, what I tell everybody is I've got a real good excuse because I'm left-handed and I'm a good cut and paste artist. But I, I can tell you that there's a lot of starving artists out there, and you absolutely should partner with one or more, so that when your client says what they want, you can go get it for them. And then once you've made that artwork, it's yours, and you can keep using it again and again for that client and other clients. Yeah, and you know what? When that client shows somebody what they got, and they're like, wow, that's cool. Where did you get it? You just got another customer as opposed to it's just another boring thing. You know, there's, there's a lady down uh, in Charleston, South Carolina, that owns uh, an embroidery franchise that I've met and worked with a little bit, um, Beth. And Beth... Wonderful, creative person. But Beth's motto, her lo um, her slogan is, we don't do boring and we don't do ugly. And you know what? That is awesome because she says, you know, the average person comes in with boring stuff. When they leave, it's exciting because we don't want it to leave here if it's dull, boring, and ugly because we feel like it makes us look bad. So they work very hard with the client to improve the graphics, the look, and everybody's happy in the long run. Yeah, there's an expression in, in the folks in Louisiana, which we're next to, called lanyap, which is means sort of a, a little bit more, I think. And, and, and that means that you, you've got to keep your eyes open. You've got to know what's going on with that client so you can, you can do a, a little bit better artwork. And, and also keep in mind that you, 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 once your customer gets into sort of doing the same thing over and over again, even if you're comfortable with it, you, you need to suggest um, uh, you know, a, a change. We had a name badge design that I did for charity work for school, and I just said, you know, it's time to time to suggest something new. And it was radical. And and at first, you know, they didn't know they were sure, but after it sort of sunk in, they were in love with it. And that would be enough to keep the business of of a good client by you looking after their interest and freshening up their artwork. Yep, and these are just examples. Every image you see on the screen is a stock. Um, I hate to say clip art, okay, because these are really good pieces of of, of graphic um, creativity here. But you know, for lack of a better word, these are actually clip art designs offline um, that you know any of you can purchase. But as David's saying, there's plenty of artists out there with a lot of great work. Whether you're using somebody local to do custom work that you're buying from them, such that you actually own it, or you're actually going online and finding you know really cool graphics, to, all these things can work to bring your products to life, you know, for your clients. Okay, our final aspect is focusing on niche markets. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in niche markets. 
You know, you really want to know who you're selling to, and I don't mean that's their name. What makes that person tick? What do they consider to be high value, low value? Because the more you know about the customer, the better off you are when it goes into presenting your products to them the right way and presenting things that they would be interested in uh, so that you can make the sale. I, you know, I tell people you should research every potential customer like you're getting ready to go apply for a job with their company because I would never apply for a job with a company if I didn't know everything I could possibly find out about that company. And it's the same thing. The more you know, the better position you are to actually sell them things that are going to you know, satisfy them. But a little bit on the downside is it, we, we do suggest that you sell to everyone, but it's sometimes kind of hard to sell to everyone. And you find yourself, if you can start focusing on certain markets, maybe you start out selling a little bit to everybody, but you find yourself really connecting with souvenirs or really connecting with photographers or, or connecting with businesses, maybe those are the niches you really want to kind of follow because then you can just build your whole business around that by understanding who they are and putting the right things in front of them. That's true. And I remember one story many, many years ago. Uh, my wife was hauling our kids around the pediatrician, and I said, you know, I bet they want name badges. And so I came up with a with a clip art design name badge. It was outstanding, and it did well. But I remember to do one thing I passed along to you, and that is put your name on the products. Well, with a name badge, the FRP, you can actually sublimate to the back side the reorder information. Two uses. One is you can put your contact information. Number two is you can put the file name you used to print. Lo and behold, a month, month later, we received a call, my wife did, from another competing pediatrician's office. A nurse had moved over there. <laughs> and by having that information on the back, by having an outstanding design that wasn't difficult, but it, it really was a great design, um, they absolutely were jealous and wanted that same uh, kind of name badge. Right. Cool. So with the niche markets, and I'm here to tell you, as I mentioned before, souvenirs became one of my, my niches, mostly coastal-oriented souvenirs because I live on the coast of North Carolina, so coastal works for me. But we found so many benefits, and this is really what kind of took our business to the next level. And you'll find that most of the successful companies out there doing any form of, of decoration um, have gotten that way because they focused in on some key markets and really mastered that market. And as a result, they're seeing higher margins. Uh, you're getting an inside track to the inner workings of the market because you really got to know how to walk the walk, talk the talk, as I like to say. Uh, it gives you the ability to develop um, custom products and graphics that are unique to you. And one of the other neat things is you can find some niches out there where there's not a lot of competition. So it's, you know, remember anybody can, anybody that does sublimation can theoretically take uh, a, a mouse pad and put a company's logo on there. But if you're able to go in with some unique products and really cool stuff and you don't have all these other people doing all the same thing as you, you the, the, the sale is not based on the price anymore. It's based on the uniqueness or, the, or they didn't know anywhere else to get it. And that's what we're talking about here with that less competition. And then finally, you do want to try to establish yourself as the source. So if you can get in deep, and, and trust me, I, you know, in some of the markets I went into, I'm doing their trade shows. I'm making donations into that group. I'm making sure that I'm in their uh, their media, and getting coverage. Um, I'm doing everything I can to become part of their group instead of an outsider selling to that group. And that's how I take that niche and take it to that higher level. You got it. Then, if you just look out there, I mean, if you it, it, really, if, if you can't really get out there and start developing things. I mean, there's just not a whole lot that we can't do. I mean, there are a few things here and there, okay? And I always tell people, if you find a weakness, okay, don't hide from it. Make it a strong point, okay? And here's an example. I, I was doing a, a seminar um, two weeks ago at Long Beach uh, in Printing Sportswear Show, and a lady asked me, she said, listen, is sublimation UV resistant? And I said, no, unfortunately, it's not. If you leave it out in the sun, it's going to fade like everything else in the world. And she said, oh, rats. And I said, why? And she said, I was looking at doing sublimated photo panels to put on tombstones. She said, it's really big in Europe, and it's big in Japan, where they'll have a picture of the person who's passed away, and it's actually on the tombstone. Um, and, and you can actually, she's seen a lot of sales of that in other countries, and she's looking at introducing that to the American marketplace. And I said, well, wait a minute, don't let that work against you. First of all, those Polaroid pictures that the families are putting on tombstones, 
they're fading too. It's going to fade. Use it to your advantage. Why don't you offer a perpetual uh, memory program where for a, a fee of some sort, every two years you will automatically send them a new one to replace the old one. And what you're doing is you turn that weakness of it, yet yeah, fades into, well, we're going to do you a program because, of course, it fades. Everything else does. But by investing in the perpetual program, you're always going to get a new one to replace it. So it's always nice and fresh. And that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. You know, we're taking a weakness, make it a strong point. Good, good place to look for ideas if you're, you know, not, not coming up with anyone is in the, the 125 ways to make money with sublimation. It's a, it's a great wake-up tool to help you look at opportunities that are probably right under your nose, like, for instance, um, selling to your church. Churches, um, especially the larger churches, are very hungry for recognition kind of products, uh, name badges, memorials, fundraising ideas, and, and so they're a great market. Well, this is bringing us down to the end here so we can start taking some questions. I just want to kind of sum up real quick the keys to making money that we've been talking about. Um, first of all, though, don't focus on price. I mean, you know, I hear people all the time talking about price. I know price will always raise its ugly head in anything that you do. But don't focus on price because one of my mottos, and I know this to be so true, is someone else will always do it for less. If I give it to you for free, someone will pay you to take it. It never ends. So don't focus on price. What you really want to focus on is being the best. Okay? You focus on being the best. You let the other guys you know, fire out the discounter. Because the other thing is this. Those that come to you looking for a dirt cheap price will leave you just as quickly looking for a dirt cheap price. You focus on finding clients that want good, unique, creative products delivered with good quality and good service. That's who you want. Okay? You don't want the people that are trying to nickel and dime you to death because that's all they're ever going to do. Trust me. So our keys here, know what you're selling, offer unique products, deliver awesome graphics, and focus on niche markets. Okay? If you do those things, Read the 125 list that David's referring to. All those things will help drive you to success or drive you to what's at the bottom of the page there, a little bit of cash in your pocket. Yeah, a couple of resources that are either free or low cost that I would recommend from us is, number one, you can check out our partner catalog, which is a blank catalog that you can personalize in CorelDRAW. Um, and you can cut it up. You could email parts of it. You can print it so that you can give clients something that looks professional with products. Also, if you do have a retail pre presence, we can make you a, a, a sort of a, um, a photo a doormat that um, instantly wakes people up is when they come in to your place. Um, so I think there's lots of great resources. Get you a photo frame if you do have that point of purchase, because you never have enough space to display all the products that you can do. Plus, even if you did, you know, a mug, how many themes can you come up with a mug? You, well, lots of them. And the photo frame can show people what you've done in the past. It can really wake people up. And I think that's the main thing is you want to let people know what you can do and step out of your comfort zone. Don't don't put yourself in the same box. Step out so you can you can do fresh products. Um, if I had to leave you one idea, if you if you want to do something tomorrow, think about uh, getting an apron and sublimating it on there so for somebody at the TV station that's doing a cooking show. Um, just a, a, a great way to get some free advertisement or do some mugs for some of the announcers on TV. Get noticed. Um, show people what you can do um, and, and be thinking, you know, every time you do something, how can you add value to it? Absolutely. You know, and that's, you know, that's the key. Always focusing on that marketing, sales, and promotion. You know, that that's so important. All right, so let's take some questions, Dave. We already got questions rolling in here. I'm going to go ahead and, and grab a couple of them, and uh, we'll discuss them. The first one here, the easiest one to answer, because I can do it real quick, is uh, is this uh, presentation going to be available? Yes, we've recorded it, and it will be available as a video. Um, once it's finished processing, uh, Condi will have it, and uh, you can contact Condi about being able to view it um, David, I'm sure you have a place to put it because you're a, you're a video king, man. I mean, you got videos everywhere. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, next question: uh, Where do you find a blank catalog? And I'm assuming you're you're talking about a catalog with uh, the blank items to sublimate. It, it, it's um, 
No, Jimmy, it's a, it's a partner catalog. Okay. And, and it's, they're decorated, but they're they're unbranded. It's unbranded. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And, and it has no equipment in it. And that's in the support section under documents. Um, so you go to the support section, and under documents is there. It may be listed as soon as you get to the support section. It's a it's a large document. It's high res. Um, a little bit complicated for people to handle. You really need Corel X4 or above um, to edit it because it's a it's a PDF. If you have any trouble, just please call us. We'll we'll walk you through the steps um, necessary to use the um, the uh, catalog. Okay, excellent. Uh, next question: Someone's asking about a fundraiser via website. Um, and let's see, for example, the school would give a link, the parent signs on, places the order, which we deliver back to the school. And she's asking if I know of one of those websites. Um, I actually do if you just email me. My email is at the bottom. I'll be glad to help you. David, are you aware of anybody maybe that you can point her to We as created well? a, a generic website many years ago. I'm not positive it's still functioning, um, but it was used to, to do some of that. Um, but no, I'm not aware of a turnkey fundraising website. Okay, um, I think I am. So if you'll just email me at the bottom, I'll, I'll try and yeah, help you in the right me, direction. Email me, Jimmy, so I'll have that okay. as well. Absolutely. Okay, uh, there are a couple of uh, questions. I'm going to kind of combine them about the stock art and clip art. Uh, the specific ones I was showing a few minutes ago came from Great Dane Designs, uh, but there's many companies out there and that you know sell this type of thing. There's also a comment that it can be the Great Dane. As yeah, well. yeah. Dane Clement is just a wonderful guy. I mean, he's he does great work and he really knows the industry, so he puts together artwork that works. You know, um, somebody made a comment about clip art can be risky online. Uh, how do you protect yourself? You know, the first thing is if you're purchasing clip art, read the fine print, okay? Because they, you know, there are different rules. Basically, you're buying a license. You never actually own the clip art. You're buying a license to use it when you're buying it from one of the sites online. Um, read the license because most of these people, like Dane, they're making this available for you to be able to reprint on the products that you sell and make money. Okay, um, and they will define how you can and cannot use it. Uh, typically, you cannot resell the art file because you don't really own it. You bought a license to use it. But that's the main thing to do is read that. I would be careful of ones. I see some pop up. There's oh, it's royalty free artwork and stuff. I don't know. You know, I like to go with ones I feel are reputable. I read the license agreement. I pay the fee. You know, I do what I'm supposed to, and you're fine. Okay. Um. Uh oh. Big question here. Uh, it, is there legalities in using a trademark logo to give to a customer for a sample? Well, 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 Cindy, that's such a big question. Um, I have done webinars and seminars, both trademarks and copyrights. I'm not an attorney, so first of all, I'll warn everybody, anything I say cannot be held against me because I'm not an attorney, uh, other than the fact that I've done some research and I, and I have a copyright attorney who's helped me with some of my uh, clip arts and designs that, that I've created and offered for resale. Um, basically, if you're going to go to a client and you're going to show them their logo, okay, so you took their trademark logo, you put it on a product and you took it to them show to them, I'm not aware of any client that's actually can go ballistic, but you have to be careful about using other people's property, you know, in that situation. Um, you know, so you just need to, I would try to stick with that person's logo if you're showing it to them. And, you know, certainly if you have a portfolio of things you've done for people, you know, you can show the portfolio. And I'll leave it at that. I'm just trying to keep that one simple because that could be a really big question. Okay, next. Uh, this is for you, David. David, do you have a digital retail price list for the catalog? Um, I do not have. A, a retail price list because th there's so many variables that come into what you should sell a product for um, that, that it's, it's, it's just very difficult to come up with a, a precise, like how much do you sell a name badge for, how much do you sell a mug. What we are in the process of doing though is on our website for each product we're going to come up with a link when you go there like you're going to buy it and the link will give you um, what, what we would say is, is 
some, some market estimates of what products should sell for, depending on, for instance, what's on the product and who you're selling it to. But as I said earlier, the three variables with, with what I call value is the product itself, what's on the product, and, and the selling environment. And, and you, people just wouldn't believe me about the, about the variations in, in, in selling prices for products. I mean, they're, they're huge, and so they do come down to, you know, uh, the selling environment and, and what's on the, the artwork, what's on the product. So it's very difficult. I mean, if somebody said, okay, how much should a mug sell for? Well, you know, it could sell for, you know, seven ninety five to nineteen ninety five, um, depending on on what's on it. So it, it just is very difficult. But one thing to keep in mind when you're coming up with selling prices is is ultimately you have to factor in your time behind the computer. So if you're spending a lot of time on artwork, um, you, you really got to factor that into your price. And if you don't, um, you're just not going to be in business. And so, um, and that's often hard to include in the price. And so, um, but but that's just how it is. So if somebody asks you to do some really fancy graphics and a lot of time and effort, um, and you end up uh, jeopardizing other orders that you could have taken care of and, and, and processed, um, then, then you just haven't been a good steward of your time. Okay. Um, what software should I purchase to clean up my photos? Well, you know, software becomes a preference. Um, if you're really working a lot with photos, true photos, you know, most photography people actually work with Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. And people that work, you know, primarily with logos tend to go more with vector art um, programs like CorelDRAW or Adobe Illustrator. So a lot of it is just personal preference um, on what you want to use. I also tied in to how you're going to use it because photographs that come out of a camera are not vector art. You know, they come out as raster images or bitmap images. So uh, Photoshop doesn't deal with, for example, vector art. Um, so those are just some of the things you need to think about when you're saying what software do I want to use. If, if somebody is saying, okay, I'm, I'm just starting out, whatever, um, and, and you need some guidance first is, is go out and buy yourself a copy of Photoshop Elements version 9, probably, you know, Sam's Club, maybe $87 or something. And, and then take a Photoshop class. There's classes everywhere. Photoshop is, is ubiquitous out there, and, and there's a lot of folks that can, can help you, a lot of classes you can take. And, and that's just a, a foundation for digital decorators. We also would very much like you to have CorelDRAW. And, and CorelDRAW is a drawing and page layout program, and in my, my estimate, it's best used in conjunction with Photoshop. I had a client call me today and has a big printer and very basic knowledge of everything and his images were printing very slow from Corel and that's because he was dropping the images directly into Corel doing things in Corel with those images that Corel does not do correctly right and as a consequence his file size was gigantuan gargantuan and his images were printing very slow we can give you lots of help on subjects like this but the bottom line is is at a bare minimum, you should have Photoshop Elements. We very much would like you to have Corel. Uh, you can download a free 30-day trial version of Corel X5 from Corel.com. You can also go on eBay, and they have some tremendous deals with older versions of Corel. And by buying an older version of Corel at a substantial discount, that allows you to also buy a new version of Corel upgrade at a, at a really good deal. Great answer. I mean, I, do you really laid it out well? I, I, that's excellent. So, do what he said. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, next question: Where can you get custom size sublimatable glass or acrylic? And uh, where can you get sublimatable acrylic? That's also laserable. I'm not sure laserable is a word, but what the heck, it, it works. Okay. Uh, any comments on that, David? I, I, I don't. I need to digest that question and know a little bit more. Um, well, you know what? Acrylic, uh, is a, acrylic is a new product, and and it's it's um, just coming out and, and available in a few sizes. Don't know about any custom acrylic at this point in time, but eventually I, I think that will be an option. Um, glass, ultimately, 
Um, if you call me, I can give you some suggestions, maybe for doing your own glass. Um, you know, I, I, I help people all the time develop their own unique substrates, and glass is probably one of those things that, that uh, fits that category. So maybe maybe give me a call or something like that, and so I can understand your needs a little bit more. Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest, Jason. If you contact David directly uh, um, and kind of walk through what you're looking for, I'm sure he can find the right solution for you. Okay, next question. Any update on cell phone covers? Uh, do yeah. we need a new heat press to sublimate cell phone covers, for example, uh, if you want to take that one, David? Yeah, it's a great question and something I'm, I'm quite excited about. As probably very few people listening know, we actually spent a tremendous amount of money many years ago selling and promoting a heat press that, that did 3D sublimation. Um, and uh, despite our best efforts, the mechanism that we were using came from the UK. And if anybody's ever had a British automobile, it's a little bit like Lucas Electronics. It just didn't hold up as well as we thought it should. And ultimately, the company that was involved with that went out of business. And so many years later, we have taken um, stayed in the game and taken a, a strong interest. And I've been sending people to the UK. Um, to visit with our partner over there. And we have heat presses on the water right now coming to us, and we hope to be uh, producing samples and things like that in the very near future. The hottest product going right now is going to be the iPhone covers, things like that. It's very exciting. We're starting to show them. You can see my little video up there um, showing it. So we are, we are very close to... to um, what I would call doing sampling, and again, we're approaching this much more cautious than we did before. Um, and what I would tell everybody out there is, is there's really two uses for this kind of stuff. We'll call it standard, and then special. And years years ago, the things that were coming out, with 3D sublimation, were unbelievable, unique. For instance, um, we had one company that was uh, just cranking out hearing aids that were 3D decorated for kids. And they were, instead of it being something you hide in the ear for a kid, you turned it into a fashion statement. Tremendously successful. And I think they're still producing those today. Um, you know, other things were, I saw people that were decorating insulin pumps. Um, I'm trying to drawing a little blank of all the other products, but there's a lot of exciting things that you could, you could sublimate that are, are not flat. And so um, I think that will be very exciting. Yes, it needs a, a different heat press. It's a vacuum heat press. And so you put the you print onto a film, and the film is pulled with a vacuum around the object. Then you hit it with heat. It sublimates. It, it, it's, it's outstandingly gorgeous. Cool stuff. Okay, someone asked me about product for a bowling team tournament. What are some great products that Combi sells for bowling? I only saw football and basketball on your website images. Uh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I'm drawing a little bit of blank on, on um, exactly what might be appropriate for a bowling team. Um, obviously, if you're in the engraving business and you have a, um, you know, a rotary engraver or anything like that, you could you could actually cut out uh, some of the sublimation materials um, and do your own, you know, we'll call it pin, bowling pin, plaques, things like that. But as far as standard um, off-the-shelf product, I just, I'd have to give it a little bit more thought. I'm, I'm a slow-thinking engineer, folks, and, and so it, sometimes it takes me a little time to, to um, come up with something useful. Well, I think it's, it's a great situation of where, you, you look at the product, but it's, it's, you look at a product sometimes that's decorated for a specific industry or something, and you don't really see the product for what it can be used in all these other different ways. So, you know, I would sit down and look at a list of what do I think bowlers want. And I don't, I don't bowl enough, or I'm not on a bowling team that level to know what they'd want. But I mean, certainly, you know, you talk about the plaques and the mugs and, you know, all these different types of things where you're getting shots of them doing whatever they're doing. Um, and putting some creative graphics. And a lot of times that's what we're doing. We're taking something very basic, but we're jazzing it up with the graphics to make it, you know, extraordinary. So I, I think it's, flags. yeah. By the way, for the person out there that asked that question, um, 
with the 3D sublimation, people have sublimated to bowling balls. Um, the, the, the bigger presses have enough depth where you could put the bowling ball in it and, and uh, sublimate. And it, it's pretty darn amazing to see something like that on a bowling ball. Yeah. Okay, um, I have a 14 by 16 heat press, and some items like the large cutting board just barely fits the press. Can we make the sub items to fit the 14 by 16 heat press? And and that's kind of you could take that question a couple of different ways. Like I'm not sure if, if he's asking if the manufacturers can take that into account, or is there something they can do to handle larger pieces with a small press? Good question. We are certainly very aware, conscious of when we bring out new products, making sure that that the printers and the heat presses fit. Some of the traditional products. Um, like the cutting boards are very fixed. Um, when we first did, started doing cutting boards probably 15 years ago, there was not a small cutting board, interestingly enough, and, and we tried to make sure that that product could be done on the smaller printers and so forth. So some of the stuff we have to deal with is just legacy issues with, with what was around many years ago and, and, and whatever sizes were industry standard. And, and migrating them into our industry are, are, are not always painless. Um, great question, something that, that we are well aware of today to, to do our best to help people instantly be able to, to start, start using that product. Okay, next question. I would like to approach hospitals and offer newborn photo products. What is the best way to sell the product to the consumer and pay the gift shop their cut? So. I'll start on that one, then turn it over to David. Um, I've done programs like this before, and what we basically did was we set it up that everything worked through the gift shop, and we created templated products. So we had a limited number of products because if you give them too much choice, they totally lose their mind. Um, and then we had a template system where they could show them the product, and the template meant that the customer has to supply the name the date or whatever, you know, those fill-in items, those variables that go with it. So basically they could choose maybe from three different art um, templates, supply the information that has to be put into that template, uh, supply the image. And, and, you know, every hospital is a little different, but I've dealt with hospitals that actually have the gift shop people going up and actually taking photos of newborns and then trying to resell them. But, you, you know, you have to plug all those things in together, but you've got to keep it simple. Because if you give too many choices to the consumer, they can't make up their mind. And the gift shop, you don't want to give them too many areas that they can get it wrong. You know, so you know that's the approach that I've used. And David, you might have seen some different approaches. I don't really have intimate knowledge of, of that, but the first thing I would do is try to understand: um, is there, you know, a photographer that's involved with it? Um, you know, what products are they offering, if any? Um, you, know, you know, what's happening? Um, and then figure out, do you partner with them? Does the process come open for bid later on? You know, what's, what's the best way to, to work with them um, and, and go from there? Also remember, you know, the buttons, you know, that, that, um, that you know, mom and dad are wearing around or our grandma or grandfather with the, um, the feet or something like that or the hand. Um, and so, so, you know, angle, but I, I you know, again, I think each hospital is probably just going to be a little bit different, and and you'll have to go and see what programs are there now, and then figure out: do you partner or do you try to do it yourself? It may be too much to do it yourself if you're not not in the photography business, and and so my recommendation, just you know, for now is is just just focus on partnering. Um, I think that's that's a great way to go. Okay, uh, as a follow up to your 3D. Um um, information that you just gave out. Uh, the, there's a question: Would the vacuum press allow you to sublimate on golf balls or safety glasses? Currently, I only know of pad printing to be able to do these items. Excuse me, had to sneeze there real quick. Oh, um, I understand. I, the um, I I really don't know. Um, um, you know exactly. You know what would happen if you sublimate a golf ball? I think we did. Try to sublimate one years ago, um, so I really don't know. There's a few directive to substrate printers that will um, will allow you to print on golf balls. Obviously, it's not quite the same thing as sublimation, 
but it, it, there's no chance of, of deforming the golf ball or something like that. So I, I, I don't know, but those are real good things for us to experiment with and to see, um, you know, if it, if uh, what's possible. But I, I'm sorry, I don't have a good answer for you. Okay, next question. Uh, someone was asking about the Sawgrass Sublimation 101 guide that we just released to uh, our social media followers yesterday. Um, Bob, I'll be glad to help you with that. If you just want to email me directly, I'll be glad to just send it to you direct. You know, I'll make it simple for you. Yeah, the um, I, I read um, the guide that was um, Peter Swain and it was updated by Jimmy. Um, and I think it has some good information. Another great resource is just if you go to our document section is the sublimation instructions. The challenge with anything from a, a guide that Jimmy has to our sublimation instructions is we probably update our sublimation instructions um, every week now or every two weeks because of changes in substrates, new products. And so it, it becomes challenging to keep up with, with all the things. And that's why you know, we've got a great staff in tech support here and, and our sales folks is to help you be successful. And, and my best advice is just you know, don't beat your head against the wall. Pick up the phone and call when you have an issue or when you've got a product you've never done or you're, you're you know, nervous about, you know, doing a laptop case. Um, you can't believe how well the iPad cases are selling around here. Um, and, you know, if you've never done that kind of product, you probably uh, want to call and ask, watch the video, read the instructions, things like that. So there's a lot of great resources that are available to you to help you be successful. What I tell everybody is that um, everybody makes mistakes. And, and I've certainly made my share. For instance, uh, transferring to a plaque upside down when you look at the back and the keyhole is, <laughs> uh, on the bottom. And what I tell everybody is, is don't try to hide your mistakes like us men typically do. Um, create you a wall of shame where you're showing people <laughs> your mistakes um, so that if it's near your heat press, I have a plaque upside down near my heat press, and it reminds me to check and make sure I've got the plaque in the correct orientation. And, and so doing simple things will greatly increase your profits, because every time you make a mistake, it's a royal pain to, to, um, to do it over again. And, and so there's lots of resources. My 101 Tips and Tricks is a few great resources to help you cut down on your number of mistakes. Um, I also recommend that you keep a sublimation diary because our instructions are only so good. And, and it, each press is just a little bit different. And so you need to write down your successes and failures um, so that when you get your settings really tuned in uh, for you, th that you can, it's repeatable. And when you go back and do that product again like a glass cutting board, you can look up, see, OK, here's how I did it. Here's my time. I'm good to go. And so. Um, that's going to really help you increase your profits, um, make sure you can deliver the product when you said you could. So, so there's lots of things to help you be reliable and to be profitable. And, and that's sort of where I'd like to you know, remind everybody is, is be thinking about how you can grow your profits with your existing clients. Could be through bundles, could be maintaining artwork, could be by, by looking after their interests. Be, you're asking them what's going on with their organization, their church, their ball team, whatever, the swim team, so that you're, you're there when they're doing those fundraisers. You're there when they've got that championship um, so that you can, you can be there and to help them. Okay. Um, next question. Someone's asking about sublimated ceramic plates to be able to make commemorative plates. Uh, do you carry those? Yes. Um, okay. The uh, plates have been around a long time. So a long time, there's some, there's some excellent videos that show you how to do it. Plates are one of these kind of products that um, I, I, I don't try to talk people out of them, but I, I try to make sure they understand reality. You cannot do a plate as if it was a hobby every once in a while product. It, it's, it's, too, um, it's not difficult, but it's too detailed for somebody to do, do a successful plate playing around. Okay. And so you have to have your head screwed on correct. Our instructions are very good. They're excellent. The videos are good. And, and I don't think it's hard at all. 
but if you're playing around and your pressure is too tight, you're going to break the plate. You know, as soon as you close the press, if your temperature is really not where it needs to be um, and so forth, then you're not going to be successful and you're going to get irritated and mad. And so plates are one of these kind of products um, that you really have to um, have your head screwed on right, completely understand the instructions. You probably want to purchase a pyrometer, which is just a little fancy instrument for measuring your, plux, your puck's uh, temperature. And if you do all those things, you're going to be real happy. And, and plates are a great product for um, oh, just all sorts of things. For instance, um, some of the um, historic neighborhoods here in Mobile, I know a couple of people, and every year they have their, their open houses where people um, you know, donate money to a, a, a charity to tour these houses, and they have plates on sale, a uh, commemorative plate for this year, and people collect them. And, and sublimation is a great technology to do that. You just need to, need to follow our instructions, call, and ask for help. Okay, uh, let's see. Next question is, uh, for sports teams, are there track jackets and performance apparel? Uh, basically, let me rephrase the way this is asked. Um, is there performance apparel for sports teams? And the answer is yes. Uh, but, you know, new things are coming out all the time. And you may see or not see what you need right now. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But that's one thing that I've seen with the Poly Performance Apparel is the assortment of options is definitely growing, you know, consistently on that. David? Um, the, uh, I'm amazed at the number of, of, of polyester kind of products here. The revolution is going strong through thanks to people like Under Armour, Reebok, Nike that are, that are just making you know, millions of, of polyester kind of products. So I'd get out there, I'd look around. We sell a large number of, of what I would call normal products like shirts, things like that. Shorts now we're selling and, and other things. The world is very large with these, these products and so probably can, can um, find out what you want. One of the tips that I've just put on the, the videos um, just recently was if you if anyone in the crowd here has ever pressed to polyester, one of the challenges is um, if you use too much pressure, you have uh, marks where the edge of the paper was. And um, after thinking about this for a long time, and sometimes it does take me a long time, um, you know, people came up with, well, let's put the vapor foam kit underneath there. Well, a technique that was invented here at Condi. Um, that's on a video right now is if you deckle the edge of the paper, meaning you tear the edge of the paper so that it has a soft, ragged edge, um, pretty much you eliminate all the, the crease marks that normally would be associated with sublimating to polyester apparel. So that's, that's a tip that I recommend everybody try out, see if it works for you, um, and it certainly makes your, your, your apparel and soft substrates um, look a whole lot better. Okay. Um... Will the film for the iPod phone work for the? I don't. I don't even recognize this word. Melamine, M-E-L-A-M-I. Melamine. melamine. Okay, melamine plates. Is a, melamine is, is a material that's a phenolic resin kind of okay. material, and it, it's commonly used in plates and a bunch of other stuff. Okay. And and the kind of plates that you see at the at Disney at the souvenir places kind of stuff. It is melamine, but it, it has a sealant on top of it, and that sealant prevents it from being sublimated. So if you were to buy a, a blank melamine plate, um, you would not be able to sublimate to it because it has a, it has a sealant on top. You would have to buy um, melamine plates that were essentially ha were missing that top coating. So it's a very common question, um, and, and the people who are doing those photo plates are actually doing them with sort of a hydraulic press with um, melting the resin and forming the plate in their press, hmm. um, as I understand it. Okay. Um, and so, so um, it, it's, it's not a sublimation product as far as I know. Yeah, okay. Um, can I swap the sublimation inks for the chromoblast ones to produce cotton items? And David, I know there's different ways to do this, but I'm going I'm to let you talk about you know, your recommendation for that. What's the question? Uh, can I swap the sublimation inks 
for the chromoblast ones within the same printer to produce cotton items? No, is the answer, and, and there's a lot of reasons for it, um, but it, it's not cost effective to do that, um, and, and having two dissimilar inks that meet each other is a bad thing, and so the amount of effort that would be required to do it is just, just not the right thing to do. Um, you really should invest in two printers um, if you wish to do both technologies. Um, and, and certainly I would say many of our clients, you know, do, do cotton decorating. They do sublimation. Sublimation is, is certainly my first love. But, you know, let's face it, if, if you've got folks coming in your place that want T-shirts for the Cub Scout week, weekend outing, well, that's probably a, a cotton kind of job. And, and you know, you can, you can quickly pay for a, a smoke, small chromoblast system either on the E3300 or, or for bigger jobs, the GX7000. So chromoblast is a neat technology, um, very, very good technology for a white cotton or 50-50 shirt. Yeah, and that would have been my exact same recommendation. Um, I know there are some other solutions floating out there, but the reality is having those two separate printers, especially when you consider that the 3300 is such a, um, a, a you know a reasonably priced printer, it just makes a whole lot more sense. Okay, um, someone's asking about the cost of the 3D heat press. And that might be something, I don't know if you want to discuss there or just have them contact you. I think you. The, the basic economy model probably will be around $15,000. Okay. So one of the things we probably will do is do fulfillment for our clients um, until they're sure that they've got their business model and it makes sense for them to buy a press. Um, and I don't want someone buying a press unless they've got their act together and understand they're going to be able to pay for it. And so we, we will put ourselves in a position to be able to do wholesale fulfillment for our clients, and, and then they can figure out. And that's how I do with the bigger presses and bigger printers. We have our wholesale fulfillment uh, division here, and, and we want people to understand uh, the economics of it before they put down that money and buy the equipment, um, because that, that's, you know, we're, we're partners. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Uh, someone was asking a question. Going back to the Hannah Elizabeth, um, where you saw the the photo frame with the picture inside of it of the baby, and the comment was, "Okay, so you, you do a great job with the frame, then the parent doesn't have a photo that fits that particular frame, uh, you know, and it's not something necessarily you could trim with scissors." Is what he's implying here. Do you offer to Photoshop the photo for them? To be able to massage it to fit in there, and and you know how much time can you afford to spend? Well, the reality becomes the ROI factor. I mean, you can spend as much time as you want, depending on how much money you're making. I mean, that's kind of the way I look at it. I mean, if you're making a very very small margin, you don't want to spend any time on it. If you're making a very large margin, you might. But keep in mind too, the other thing is, you know, you're looking at a photo frame there. But I, what I like even better is not the photo frame, but actually just taking the image and doing it straight onto. Um, like a, a photo panel where I'm integrating the image they give me into all the other graphics and then it's just one print for the whole thing instead of just a frame where I'm sliding the photo in. I mean, there's two different options to do it, um, but I like it where I'm actually controlling the image better than just depending on them to hand me the picture. Dave, you have any thoughts on that? No, 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 uh, no, no Okay. Um, Dave, you get all kinds of wonderful compliments here. Uh, there's some comments about one of your, is it uh, pronounced Micah or Micah, one of your reps? Micah is, uh, Micah, Micah Stacy is, um, well, she recently got married, and um, I'm trying to remember her new name. Um, <laughs> gosh. Um, well, we but, just um, got, yeah, she's, she's a great rep. We just got, yeah, some, some uh, attaboys for her, or girls, I guess. And also somebody, a couple of different people have been thanking you for just everything that you've done, some of the products you've done, the information you put out there. So uh, you definitely have a pretty nice fan base out there, I can tell you that. Well, thank you, everybody out there. And uh, one of the things I try not to do is, is say no, you know, when somebody asks me a question because, you know, I've been proved wrong so many times um, by saying, for instance, the melamine, whatever. And, and folks like you are, are just instrumental in, in my success and my ability to help others. And every time somebody calls me, 
um, it, it's really an opportunity for me to, to grow and, and, and learn from you um, and to help you be successful. And, you know, that's why I come to work. I come to work to help people, and, and, um, and by your success, we're successful. And, and so um, it just I love what we do. Wow. Uh, and you do a great job, i got to tell you. So, you know what, David? We've been at this for about you know a little over an hour and a half. Uh, this has been a great session. Lots of good questions, lots of good energy coming through. And you don't get a lot of energy through the Internet, trust me. But you know what? Just by I'm getting a chance to actually read what you, what you guys are writing, and, and it's just been a really good exchange here. Uh, but I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here um, for the day. And Eddie, again, thank you for being with us uh, during this webinar, and thank everyone who participated and watched uh, please let us know how we can serve you in the future. And, uh, Jimmy, again, thank you, and thanks, Sawgrass, for being uh, our partner. Well, thank you, David. Uh, it's always a pleasure to work with you, and I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, share the same stage with you. I mean, that, that actually is an honor for me because, you know, you're – you're the guy, okay, when it comes to the world of sublimation. So it's well, been a great you, experience Jim. for me. And, again, everybody they're on the screen, it, there, there's our direct contact. So anything you want to follow up with, please do that, and we'll be glad to help you out with that. And, so. and, and for people out there that are still listening, if, if you need to, pick up the phone and just call me. Um, my extension is 202. That's 800-826-6332, 202. Yes, I do handle emails, but but I really prefer talking to people. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. Okay, thank you, David, and thanks, everybody, for coming out, and we'll see you again sometime in the near future, we hope. Take care. All right, bye. Bye-bye.